So, now I'll sing a song about tattooing. Have we, have we had one of them yet? I don't think we have, have we? Um, a friend, I sing, I still sing in a band in Canada. I've been singing with this band since 1972. And, and uh, we haven't matured in the slightest. Um, for a certain amount of time. Um, and, and, you know, we, we just do a couple of tours a year now. I go over every September and join them for a, a little tour. It's like an old boys' reunion is what it is, you know. It's, we, we hesitate to call it art. But anyway, and one of the members of the band, Ian Bell, uh, is among many other things. He was the curator of the Port Dover Harbour Museum on the north shore of Lake Erie. And he's quite an authority on the, the lore of the Great Lakes and all the, the shipping traditions and so on of the Great Lakes. And, and at one point, he was doing an exhibition in the Port Dover Harbour Museum on tattooing. And in particular, the, the sailors' traditions of tattooing. And while this exhibition was on, there was a fella came in to the um, exhibition, obviously very, very familiar with the art of tattooing, because he was covered in them, and uh, he, he told this story. And in particular, he was talking about the fact that tattooing was not just, for sailors, was not just decoration, it was lucky charms. And a lot of these tattoos actually had a talismanic significance to them, but they were talismans against drowning. And he listed what to him and to the, to, to the English sailor tradition were, were the important tattoos. He, and he described them as this. The Union Jack, the Rosen Crown, the Mermaid, the Swallow, a dagger, an anchor, and a cock upon the knee. And these were all charms. They were traditional sailor's tattoos, and many of them were there as a protection against drowning. In particular, tattooing the knees, apparently, was a very important one. So, Ian... Uh, quite taken with the story, wrote this song called The Mermaid and the Swallow. <clears throat> <clears throat> In Bristol, just before the war, the tankers loomed along the shore. I would hang about the store of a shop down by the quay. It was there when I was just a lad, I took the trade I've always had, where the hand of my first master made his mark on me. The Union Jack, the Rose and Crown, the Mermaid and the Swallow, a dagger and an anchor and the cock upon the knee. And while the bombers loomed above, I inked the names of the girls they loved in hearts upon the hearts of oak before they went to sea. I was a little older when the war was over, even then the Navy still had need of men, and so I signed aboard. In engine rooms and on the grates, I plied my trade among my mates, gave them the marks they wanted most and what they could afford. The Union Jack, the Rose and Crown, the Mermaid and the Swallow, a dagger and an anchor and a cock upon the knee. And down there in the oily dark, on arms and backs I made my mark, forever etched in indigo on sailor boys at sea. Then one day I sailed away across the western ocean. I shipped out of Halifax and I sailed the inland sea. Sometimes when I step ashore I would take the notion I wasn't quite as young a man as what I used to be. And now the canvas I sail under promises a world of wonder. Step right up, I'll make my mark for what you want to pay. In the dying days of August, Captain in a sea of sodas, but the wonders of a captain's life are not in style today. The Union Jack, the Rose and Crown, the Mermaid and the Swallow, a dagger and an anchor and a cock upon the knee. And from the awning of my pitch, the seaway like a muddy ditch, as from this county fair I watch ships gliding down to sea. The Union Jack, the Rose and Crown, the Mermaid and the Swallow, a dagger and an anchor and a cock upon the knee. And where my shirt sleeve meets my skin, I see a map of where I've been and where the hand of my first master made his mark on me.